Hello everyone and welcome to a really wild game that was played today in the Pro Chess League between Peruvian Grandmaster Jorge Cori and uh, Alireza Firuja and I was gonna show you a different game but then I saw this one and I decided on this one but I will show you the game that I was gonna show you tomorrow uh, it's a game between uh, Fabiano Corona and Ding Liren uh, as a way of getting uh, w warmed up for the candidates but uh, that's uh, gonna have to wait for tomorrow because this is just uh, a beauty so, like I said, uh, Pro Chess League, uh, rapid game, uh, let's check it out. Uh, Corey with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to f6, knight to f3, we have d5, c4, and e6. Of course, we go into the queen's gambit declined. e3, bishop to e7, and the knight to c3. So, all standard stuff. We have castles, uh, a trade in the center, captures, captures, and bishop to d3. Uh, we have c6, strengthening the center, and the now h3, taking away the g4 squares from Firuja's pieces, and rook to e8 now. Uh, we have queen to c2, it's an, a queen to c2 is a new move, there are a few games there uh, where uh, castles was played here, uh, but queen to c2, uh, a new move by Cory. so already as of move 9 we have a completely new game. Uh, we have bishop to d6 by Firuja before uh, deciding whether to, to start pushing immediately maybe, or to maybe uh, consolidate. Uh, but uh, first bishop to d6. Uh, also, this uh, now uh, allows uh, the black rook to, to uh, be included in the fight for the e4 square. We have bishop to d2, now maybe uh, deciding to castle queen side, uh, and knight b to d7. Uh, we have g4, saying that, okay, I'm more of a, a more interested in uh, attacking the king side than actually castling king side myself. Queen to e7, piling up on the e-file as uh, Cory's king is still in the center of the board, and now Cory castles queen side. Uh, we have knight to e4, still Firuja waits with uh, with the pushing of the pawns, and here uh, the f2 pawn is under attack. So uh, not interested in capturing, uh, he decides to keep the tension with rook f to d1. We have knight to f8 by Firuja, preparing to bring the knight over to g6, and now king to b1. Not only a prophylactic move, making uh, room, uh, getting the king to a safer square, but also uh, freeing up the c1 square for the bishop if needed. Knight to g6, and now comes bishop to c1, so not avoiding any unnecessary trades. We have bishop to b4 by Firuja, now preparing to capture and mess up uh, Cory's uh, pawn structure here, but knight to e2, not uh, again, not making it easy for Firuja Firuja to trade pieces. Bishop to d7, again Firuja waits with the pushing of the pawns on the queen side and now knight to f4. Uh, preparing to, to get rid of the knight here and also create some weaknesses on the king side. And also if, if uh, Firuja captures then he doesn't mess up white's pawn structure but white gets an excellent e5 outpost for his knight. Uh, which, which happens anyway so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Firuja rook to c8. Uh, continues uh, developing pieces and now we have knight captures on g6, h captures and now knight to e5. Finally the knight gets there and it's going to be very hard to get it away from there uh, as it's on, a, it's on a very nice square. f6 is no longer possible as the g6 pawn is weak so if you want to get it away from there you either have to waste a lot of moves with the knight but your knight is on an excellent square as well uh, or you can play something like bishop here and then try and uh, trade it off but that this is a valu valuable attacking piece. So c5. As you know, Cory is coming on the king side, so it does make sense to strike in the center and open some files here, uh, especially since the rook and queen occupy the same file. Queen e2, getting out of the way, and now c4, uh, basically forcing a trade on e4, captures, captures, and now f4. Cory starts his attack on the king side, uh, but Firuja not impressed, he goes c3. Uh, and Cory, now not impressed with, with Firuja's uh, move, uh, f5. So really uh, a, a wonderful game where uh, each player just uh, tends to his own, uh, own, own side of the board. Uh, and now, uh, before doing any captures here, bishop to a4. He wants to reinforce the c2 square, so when the capture uh, occurs, you can uh, do this very nice rook lift with rook to c2. Uh, but Cory again unimpressed, just f captures and g6. Now threatening to capture here with check, win material, and win the game. So Firuja has to react. He plays f6. Uh, although even, even capturing was possible. Uh, because if rook to f7, then queen to d6. d6 is an excellent square for the queen. And after you try and do something, let's say rook captures on b7. Now, uh, now you can go captures, captures, and rook to c2. And it's all of a sudden uh, Firuja who is attacking. 
Uh, but he decided to go for f6 instead, which kicks away the knight from e5, that's true, but it allows uh, this pawn to be incredibly strong. And at some point, g5 will be played, queen is coming to h5, and Firuja could have some problems on the king's side. Uh, or not, we'll, we'll see what happens. So Cory immediately goes for g5, frees the h5 square for his queen, and here we have c captures on b2. Uh, daring white to go for queen to h5, uh, but before that uh, he decides uh, that it's important to capture on b2. So bishop captures on b2, and now what do you play here? There's actually only one good move for Firuja here, so uh, pause the video and try to find it while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, as it's really not an easy move to, to decide upon. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop to a3. Bishop to a3, pretty much the only move that stops the queen h5 idea, because now if you go here, now the problem is you have bishop to c2 check. And now wherever the king goes, only then do you capture on b2 with check. So you don't give white the opportunity to, to deliver the check on h7. So let's say king a1, captures, captures, and now queen b4 lands with check. Uh, if, uh, if you move to a1, uh, then just queen c3 is mate. Uh, so king to c1, but now you go in, in front of the rook, so bishop to a4 with check. And now the king has no squares. You have to block with something. doesn't really matter where you go. Rook captures and c6 will be mate. So basically, after bishop to a3, uh, queen h5 is no longer an option. You have to go something like captures, captures, knight g4, and then continue the game. Bishop c2 with check, uh, and after uh, this, uh, the, the game continues. So here, it's extremely complicated. White would have to go captures, and then after captures, captures on a3, attacks the queen. Uh, but it's just a beautiful line, so, so I will show it. Captures here. Now you capture on f6 with check. King h8 and now g7 with check. Captures, captures with check. King h8 and now you capture here. And now it's two rooks uh, and a knight against a queen. But with the uh, white king being so wide in the open, uh, he, he's going to have a lot of problems uh, uh, getting out of all the checks. So here we would most likely see a, a, a draw by perpetual. So, uh, uh, like I said, after this captures, bishop to a3 was the strongest move for Firuja, but instead he rushed in with rook to c2, which, uh, which seems... Uh Seems uh, overwhelming for white, but uh, Corey still does w uh, the only thing he can. Queen h5, which was the plan all along, so that makes it all that much easier. And now the problem is queen h7 is coming. If you allow that, king f8, queen h8 is mate. And if you try giving your king some uh, squares to run away to the queen side, still not going to happen because of queen h7 check, king f8, and now this rook captures on f6 check. Uh, you capture and now, of course, check. Uh, king has to move and queen captures on f6 will be mate. Uh, so there's that. Uh, so instead of uh, trying to run away or trying to uh, defend, uh, Firuja starts a king hunt of his own. Rook captures on b2 with check. So what happens here? King captures uh, and now bishop to c3 check. Firuja gives up uh, a bishop here. It's important to also check out bishop to a3 check because, uh, well... Uh, let's say king a1, what do you do now? Bishop b2 check. Problem is, white will not capture and allow queen b4 check. White will just gonna go king here. And now, if you give white uh, just one move, let's say queen b4, now okay. If you, if you get a move in, you win, but you don't. Queen, h8, uh, queen h7 check, king f8, and now queen h8 check. King has to run away, queen captures here with check. King to d8 captures with check, you go here check and now you go here and now finally knight to d7 with check now it doesn't matter if you capture the knight or try and run away uh white's next move is the same if captures queen to c5 and now you force a queen trade uh, and there's not much black can do to continue the attack. Captures, captures, and after you get your bishop to safety, let's say h4, and the connected pawns uh, will, will do, the, jo uh, will do uh, the job done. So, after king captures uh, here, bishop to a3, Firuja decides it's not working, decides for bishop to c3 check instead. Cory captures, and now rook to c8 with check. But again, we have to check queen a3 check. Will will it be enough, or the king escapes? Uh, king d2, queen b2 check, king to e1, and now queen c1 check. This is the problem. You cannot keep an eye on the f2 square while checking the white king. So he uses the f2 square to escape, king d2 check, king g3 captures, king goes back, and after another capture, you finally get a move in, rook f2. And now uh, black has the 
make us make a move and allow queen h7 or you trade here but it's not going to be it's not going to do anything for you since uh, well you are down a whole rook and of course uh, white is completely winning so instead uh, firuja goes rook to c8 with check we have knight to c4 blocking and now again rook captures on c4 check by firuja uh, but again it's important to to check if queen to a3 check is possible because the knight is pinned you cannot capture with the knight so uh, let's see if this works king d2 now rook captures on c4 because you don't really have a better move uh, you could you could ca capture here but still king to a1 and again you have the same problem you cannot keep the king uh, c keep the control of the f2 square and check the king so here if you play rook captures then it's just queen h7 check king f8 and now this beautiful rook captures on f6 check uh, impossible to capture because of queen f7 will now be mate there's a pawn on g6 as you all know king e7 but now just captures king to d8 and now let's say queen g7 check bishop blocks and you pick up the rook and again uh, white is up too much material and there's no way to continue the game for black so after knight c4 queen to a3 doesn't work for firuja so firuja plays a rook captures on c4 we have king captures and now b5 with check this is this is one hell of a king hunt and luckily for Cory, he does have the c3 square if he goes here then then he runs into queen b7 check so king c3 now queen a3 check king to d2 and queen to d3 with check uh we have king to e1 uh, and now queen captures on e3 with check but now uh, you don't have uh, the d1 square the bishop covers that but luckily you you can bring your queen at the back to help out with the defense queen to g3 check by firuja king to d2 now not even uh, not even blocking so king d2 queen to g5 with check queen to e3 and now queen to d5 trying to deliver some more checks from here but Cory says uh, nope rook to c1 uh, and okay firuja played queen to a2 with check but uh, now Cory just played king to e1 and it was in this position that uh, alireza firuja resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here he's simply too much uh, down too much material and uh, there is no way to continue the attack so uh, whatever happens uh, the the white doesn't really have all that much to worry about he, he can just play something like queen to d2 start pushing his pass pawn uh, get his other rook into the game and th th there's no way to continue this game so really, really an amazing game by both of them, and all, all, you, as you know, the greatest games are played by not one, by, but, but, but by two players, so both of them have to give their contribution for such a game to exist, and in this game, uh, two of them d did give their contribution. Uh, so really amazing stuff a br brilliant attacking game firuja was better uh for for a long time in the in the beginning but then uh, after rushing that rook to c2 move allowing queen to h5 then it was just uh, all cory so really impressive stuff uh, i i do hope you enjoyed it and uh, tell the truth uh, how many of you thought uh, firuja was going to win this game uh when, when he started the, the king hunt uh wh when i was watching the game i i thought uh, he he was definitely going to finish it but uh you know Corey pushed back the attack and he came up uh, he, he came out uh, on top so yeah uh, really impressive stuff uh, like i said tomorrow we continue uh with the morphe saga and we're gonna check up on that game i mentioned between ding and fabi so i do hope you enjoyed that as well uh, i would like to thank morton uh, ristorp jonathan owen john austin begum impex uh, srl and elias dahu for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and i will see you soon uh, continuing the coverage of the morphe saga uh, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and of course whatever else happens in the chess world uh, the candidates uh, tournament starts in three days or if it's postponed maybe it doesn't but then what are you going to do with uh, mvl does rajabo go back in or does mvl stay it's, it's going to be a whole mess uh, but uh, th that's what chess is all about uh, so yeah uh, thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your weekend